my uh, brassica babies that are in the greenhouse are taking an absolute beating from the caterpillars <laughs> uh, so i'm going to do double whammy uh potting them up because i sewed them just into seed trays rather than you know individual cells uh, so i'm going to pot them up and i'm also going to kind of pick over them and take off as many caterpillars as i can um they're so difficult to see these caterpillars that like each as i'm potting them up i'll be able to take you know each individual plant and just like check the stems because they are being devoured the poor little sausages seriously they're in a bad way anyway the ones that i'm potting up are the red russian kale purple sprouting broccoli something else i'm not going to do the kohlrabi i'm going to put the kohlrabi straight in the ground as small it doesn't need potting up and there's one other ah oh, yes that would be this stuff uh which is called cavalodifolia which is obviously like uh, uh. which cavalo just means kale and folia foliage like leafy kale i suppose i mean i think of all kales as being pretty leafy but it then in the english translation of it that's on there says sprouting broccoli but it's not like any sprouting broccoli i know anyway this was one of the ones that i picked up when i was on holiday for my birthday and i have a lot of it well, well i say i have a lot of it i have some of it left over from the caterpillars but anyway it needs potting up I am going to do myself 10 of each of these plants. I mean, that's more than I need. I probably need maybe six of each, I'm guessing. Although obviously with the uh, leafy kale minestra stuff, I have got no idea how much I need or how big the plants get. But the things like the red Russian kale and the cavalinero, I'll probably end up wanting about six of these plants. So if I pot up 10, that gives me plenty of leeway uh, in case of disasters or in fact, just picking the best plants to go in. That's also going to mean that I've got a lot left over in these pots, so I'm going to find some willing recipients for them somewhere else on the plot. <laughs> I'm using these little square pots for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I've got well into the square pot scenario because you just don't have that wasted space and you can pack them into these little trays. Um, like with round pots, you've got a lot, it seems like you've got a lot of wasted space. The square ones I just think are really good. And also they're quite narrow, but quite deep. And a lot of the round pots I've got tend to be quite wide, but quite shallow. And although these uh, seedlings themselves aren't particularly leg, with brassicas in general, when you're potting them up, you want to pot them up right down to the hilt. So the whole of their stem is underneath and then firm them in really, really good. It'll give them a much better start. They don't have softy, softy stems like, say, a melon. If you bury a melon up to the hilt, it tends to uh, rot off, whereas brassicas, not at all. The more of the stem you can get under that ground, the kind of the better the root system's going to be. And one of the things brassicas really hate is rocking around in the ground, which is why you often stake them if it's going to be windy or something, because they hate that rocking. They like their roots to be really, really solid. And so by burying them really nice and deep, you give them a really good start. <music>
know something before you go. Come on. Come on. Come on, where's that? Well, I will water them in and uh, see who else wants my spares because I've got a lot of spares left over. That's about it for today, Lils, isn't it? Hey, pussycat. She's being very clingy today. Hey, Lil. I know you've had, you've had breakfast here and you had lunch next door. I know I saw you. I did. <laughs> see you tomorrow, chaps. Afternoon chaps, up here on a picking mission this afternoon. Um, not up, gonna be up here for very long, but there is so much to pick at the moment and uh, I need some dinner. I don't need any more courgettes for dinner, I can tell you that much, even though I'm gonna be picking some because the fridge is absolutely stuffed full of them. It's that time of year, it's like the drowning in courgette season. <laughs> Uh, that and so I'm going to pick some courgettes we've got a load of courgettes to pick I've got runner beans to pick which is exciting they're just starting to come into like full flow at the moment actually I need a new runner bean stringer because uh, mine the first lot of beans we got off so they're so tender it's like the first beans the runner bean stripper peeler thingy bobby that we've got was so blunt that I just couldn't even force the beans through it so I had to do it with a knife which is just dairy me not acceptable <laughs> so I need a new bean peeler thingy and then there's also a couple of other slightly more exciting bits, firsts of the year to pick. Yeah, the runner beans, the Empire variant of the Scarlet Emperor classic bean. This is the one I'm growing this year, the Scarlet Empire. Uh, the reviews were not telling porkies. They are fantastic tasting bean and also producing loads. Like I've got a lot less plants than I had intended to have, you know, because all of the germination drama and slug drama but we are still getting a really good quantity of beans, so I am a happy bunny rabbit.
violets are plenty, but these little Amalfi whites are so pretty. Two firsts of the year to be picked in here. Actually, that's that's not entirely true. But anyway, the first one is uh, we've got a couple of aubergines to pick, which is extremely exciting. And then also I've got two bell peppers to pick. I have actually already picked a couple of those bell peppers off because they started producing peppers when they were really tiny plants. But they're all oh, the sunshine. Oh, God, it feels good. Um, yeah, but like the plants were only sort of yay big and then it had like these peppers on it. So I picked them off. So technically it's not the first peppers we picked, but it's the first decent sized ones. <laughs> And then we're going to go home and I will see you back here tomorrow. Oh, sunshine. It's bliss. They're not even small ones. How did I miss them? I've been picking these blooming caterpillars off my plants. Don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, picking blooming caterpillars off these seedlings just every single day. How have I missed three fatties like that? I mean, I can understand missing the teeny tinies. Why have I got this? Sorry, I don't know why I'm filming you from underneath some uh, bubble wrap. <laughs> The caterpillars are sending me do lally, sorry.
I am pretty happy with these. Look at the size of that. That's a beefy one. So these are all the Red Duke of York. Like I said, I mean, unfortunately, I skewered a couple of them. It's a bit annoying. I will have to eat those ones pretty quick. But yeah, really, really happy. These are all Red Duke, which are normally a first early, but we've left them in the ground quite a bit longer than we did the rest of them. And we've got some absolutely excellent sized ones. I'm a happy bunny rabbit. I really am. And like, so the last lot we took out, we uh, didn't cover up. We just left them out like this to dry. Because normally, um, like you'd be doing potato picking or digging up in the sunshine. And you'd like leave, leave them out on the bed afterwards to kind of just harden up a bit before you pack them away. Uh, but it was chucking it down <laughs> last time we were digging up the potatoes. And so we bundled them into a box and stuck them in the shed, which seemed like a good idea until we realised they were next to the window and the sun was out. So loads of them got green on the top which is so frustrating. I mean, it's not the end of the world. We can still use them, um, but you just have to be quite careful to peel off all of that green stuff and it can be a bit bitter. Um, but yeah, so these ones we are going to cover up uh, airily so they don't sweat, but with like a big brown paper bag, cover them up and before we take them home, put them in a sack and eat them. <laughs> but yeah, quite a happy bunny rabbit with the potato haul. So this, I mean, I don't know how much it weighs, um, but it's quite a lot of potatoes in there. In fact, that's really heavy. <laughs> um, it's a lot of potatoes in there. And that was from, how many plants was that? In the end of that bed was uh, one, two, three, four, five plants. Not bad. Put five, five little tiny potatoes in the ground and you get all of this out. Good stuff. Good stuff. shove the peas in this bed because um, early in the year it gets loads and loads of sunshine because there's no leaves on the tree <laughs> uh, but now it's a bloody airplane 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 it's an 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 airplane but by this time of year when like the uh, oak tree is in full leaf um you get morning sun up here but then the afternoon is quite cool and this is in the shadows in the shadows in the shade <laughs> so what i'm going to do is stick the peas in this bed and i think that's going to give them the best chance if we do get any hot weather or any sunshine of any sort <laughs> okay let me go get the peas watching for a while, <laughs> at least a couple of years, uh, you will know that I've had a load of success with sliding peas out of guttering previously. No problems whatsoever. This time, however, I've learned a lesson. So when I went to sow these peas, I didn't actually wash out the guttering and it had been sat in the sunshine for a long time in that early June heat and all the mud that was stuck to it, it kind of crudded onto it. And in this moment here, I am realising that my pea roots 
have welded themselves to the crud that was stuck on the inside of this gutter. So, tip of the week, chaps, wash your guttering before you sew your peas into it. Oh, August, how beautiful you are. Oh man, it's miserable. It's like 16 degrees. Should be 30. Should be 30 and sunny. And it's just absolutely chopping it down. I know, girlies, it's pants, isn't it? Total pants, girlies. Lily's hiding in the shed with me, quite sensibly. But yeah, it's absolutely... Miserable. 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 Is it lovely weather, Mum? No, it's not. But even the chicken will come out. Pussy cat, it's wet out there. Don't go out there. Puffy, isn't it? Turn it. Never ever. 
never had a problem with caterpillars in the greenhouse before. I mean, we've had the odd one, but nothing like this, like every single day. I mean, the pak choy, look at it. I'm gonna have to start again with that. This is just, in, it's like the third time it's been completely eaten off. What little bastards. Anyway, uh, you know the minestra that I potted up just the other day, just the other day. Well, most of those ones, so that day I potted up, uh, what did I do, purple sprouting broccoli, um, cavalanero and the red Russian kale and the minestra. Well, all the rest of them are fine, I mean, to be fair, I say fine. Uh, they've had quite a lot taken off them, like, you know, he's not looking too hot at the moment, is he? Uh, that had on the leafless side. Um, but the minestra, potted them all up. So hang on, let me just shift you slightly so you can see. So these are like those ones that I potted up that day. Have a look at the minestra. The ones where anything is still there look like this. Well, hey, that was worth doing, wasn't it? Look at that. And it's a combo as well. It's a combo caterpillar and slug. A very nasty combination. Luckily, luckily I have still got a few. I mean, I gave some to Caroline, I gave some to George, uh, but I've got a couple, like a little bit left over here. So I'm, I've been picking the caterpillars off here too, and I'm gonna pop some more of them up. It's crappy. He's beautiful little. Is it crappy, darling? Is it crappy and soggy? Oh, look, soggy pussy cat. It's soggy pussy cat. Huh? Oh no! Disaster. That little disaster. Are yeah, you staying here, pussy cat? It's much better in here. It is, darling. It is. Yeah, much better, Bubba. So the only reason we're actually up here is because today's the only day that I have. Like a full day spare. It doesn't look like we're going to be doing much, does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, it is strange because... <laughs> um, it's strange because, I mean, we've got loads of brassicas outside, obviously, and although we do have this kind of netting on it, that doesn't stop the butterflies, and I've seen them going in and out. No butterfly... Ooh. Thunder. Uh, I think it might be time to escape. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, like we've got no major problem. I've picked a couple off early in the season, but no major problems with the caterpillars out here. For some reason, it's just the greenhouse. Just the greenhouse. Yeah, because the Cavalanero isn't, doesn't even have netting on it. It's just like that, but yeah. They've just gone for my baby plants. Just gone for the babies. Are you soaking yet, Mum? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful.
only two plants have actually done anything. I am not unhappy with that. Do you want to come and show off your gladioli, Mum? It broke in the rain, rain. so it had to be sacrificed <laughs> to the vase. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the gods of the vase. Oh, I've got so many flying things all over me. Right, do you think we're, although the rain's just starting to stop now. Yes, it is. Hey, Thought the rain was stopping there for a minute, but it's just the skies have opened again. So yeah, we are bailing. We are out of here. <laughs> yep. Cheers, chaps. Mm. Normally I do my cheers from home, um, but after yesterday's abysmal weather, the sun is out and it's so beautiful. I don't really have any space left on the video to film anything in the sunshine, but I just thought I'd do my cheers out here because it's a bit windy. So I've just moved into the shade because that way <laughs> I don't just do my whole cheers to you like that. Uh, this is a bit better. Oh, the sun is on my back actually and it's absolutely glorious. Anyway, yeah, the storm yesterday that we were drowned rats in, um, I hadn't realised that's actually a named storm and I saw, I've seen some terrible bits and pieces on the news. So I'm really hoping nobody had any terrible damage and I mean with the ground being so wet, I'm sure so many trees must have come down because the ground's just saturated, it's got no kind of pull to it, has it? So throw in there a whole another dump of rain and some wind. Mm. Terrible, terrible. Mm. Anyway, the weather is actually looking up. I hesitate to say that just in case um, that we go back to doom and gloom, but the weather is looking up for the rest of this week. So next week's vlog should be a sunny one. I'm hoping it's gonna be a sunny one anyway, otherwise I might just, you know, retire under my duvet and not emerge. It's one cloud in the sky and the sun is behind it. <laughs> anyway, as always chaps, I just wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who watches every week. It means so much to me and all the comments, I love it. <laughs> I do try and answer as many comments as I can, like the first 24 hours of comments I always answer, but I do read all of them, <laughs> I do. But I can't answer them on my phone for some reason, it doesn't work, so I have to actually sit down at the computer, which means like just, you know, actually, Getting to sit in front of the computer just seems like a bit of a long way off sometimes, but like I say, huge thanks. And actually, talking of comments, I'm going to do a Q&A coming up soon. Oh, oh my God, are the planes are every three minutes right now. I'm going to do a Q&A, and I don't know whether it's going to be in next week's vlog or the week after, but there's one coming up. So if you've got any specific questions, drop them underneath here. Uh, if you put Q&A at the beginning of them, I'll know, and then it means that I can actually go back and search through them when I'm doing the Q&A. It's just like a capital Q-A, you know, that I'll be able to find them, which would be handy, <laughs> rather than having to write them down, which is what I normally do, but it'd be easy just to be able to scroll through, you know. And I'll put it out on Instagram as well, because um, it's easy to type questions into Instagram. <laughs> But yeah, like I was saying, uh, just a huge cheers to everybody. Thank you for watching every week. I really appreciate it. And thank you as always to my magnificent patrons. It's more aeroplanes coming over. I'm going to leave you. And now, what? I think it's raining. Mm -hmm.